Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Brett. And welcome back to BrettandMike.com. We finally made it. This is Section 5 of our Windows 8 8.1 New User Interface Training. And really, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about more settings for the computer. Yeah, we're going to try and mop up in this section and cover anything that we might have forgotten to, to uh, tackle in the previous sections. We'll also talk about a few things like, like you mentioned, settings as well as search and a couple other odds and ends. So, all right with you, I, that's what I want to start with actually is search because to me that's my absolute favorite feature of all the features that they put into the operating system. You know, search has actually changed quite a bit from, from even from Windows 8 to 8.1, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Let's show, let's show people. So okay. I'm, I'm looking at my start screen and we've already done the, the start screen in our previous sections. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it all day. But one of the most powerful features is the ability to instantly search on anything that you want. Now, if you remember back in Windows 8.0, mm -hmm. we had search built in, but you actually had to define what you were searching for, whether what it was an it? app yeah. or out on the Internet or a document or whatever. Now all that's gone. Now it's just a universal search. So, so give wait me a, a second. Universal search. So you're saying it will search outside my folder. Yep. Outside my drive, so I have, I have multiple drives, it'll search that. It'll search inside your drive, outside your drive, out on the internet, it pretty much searches everywhere. The whole potato. All in one, and let's show you an example. Okay. What would you like to search on? What is most interesting to you? Okay, I think I can, I, I think I got one for you. And this is kind of tricky, and I apologize. I really have no idea what he's about to say. <laughs> no, but uh, what I was thinking about is music, and basically as generic a thing I can think of would be the doors. The doors. So is, Jim Morrison, the doors. Well, Jim Morrison and the but 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 here's the thing though, and this is important because okay. are we talking about a, a portal of entry or are we talking about the music group and is it smart enough to figure that so out? So the name the doors is so generic it could have a double meaning. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's see. Another example would be like Jaguar, the animal versus the car company. Let's but, do it. But let's find Doors is even more generic. So you notice I'm on the start screen. I'm not even going to have to go into a search app or anything else. Yeah. I'm just going to start typing. Okay. You wanted the doors. D -O -O -R. The doors. And you notice as I'm typing, did you see what's happening? It's propagating choices for you, right? It's guessing. So here, it's already figured out the doors songs. Yeah. So I have the doors songs. I have the doors. I have the door and window store. That would be your, what do you call it, portal of entry? <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, you have, you have choices, right? But it's defining and it says... Be very intriguing. The door to hell. I'm almost tempted let's, to let's click not, on that let's one. Let's not go there. Uh, the door restaurant in Queens. I didn't even know there was. But here's the key, Brett, is had I done this in previous uh -huh. versions of search in the, in the previous operating systems, and yeah. I would type in the doors, it would give me, what, 20,000 hits Right. Page after page after page after page, right? I just see it listed 1 through 2,976. So basically, the way this search model now works, that saved you probably sifting through, what, 40, 50 pages of, of re return It's context-sensitive, meaning it's understanding the possibilities of what I'm trying to do, and then it's grouping them so that you wanted the Doors, the musical group, so I'm going to click on Doors songs, mm -hmm. and now I don't have to filter through all those pages of Windows and Storm Doors or the yeah. Door Restaurant or any of that. Look at this. I've got a bunch of great, Look, great... Look, it starts out with some videos of some of the songs and goes YouTube in Some YouTube clips. There's some uh, album covers. Wikipedia is in here. It just goes on and on. And did you see how fast it was when it yeah, did that? Yeah, I was pretty amazed by that too. But Here's the, related searches. One more. I yeah. just want to show. Related searches. But it, the related searches all relate to the Doors, the musical group. It doesn't do related searches outside of this category. So it, it, it basically it, it narrows and narrows and narrows all the way down. But I just... I can't get over how, how rich this Absolutely. looks versus traditional, you know, URL, URL, URL. Previous searches, right, you would yeah. come up with just text box after text box after text box, page after page after page. In yeah. seconds, I can get to what I want, and Windows 8.1 knows conceptually what I'm trying to yeah. do. Now, what was the other one you had, Jaguar? Yes. You picked one that I don't know how to spell. It's, it's well, J pretend you're British, Jaguar. Jaguar, there we go, Jaguar, Jaguars.com, Jaguar F-Type, Jaguar Animal, Jaguar Cars. <laughs> I assume that's what Jaguar you... Jaguar forever. Yeah, right? I am, actually. Okay, you so let's see what the car does. You want the cars? Yeah. So I click on Cars, and here we go. Look at that. 
Look at that. Beautiful images and all as fast as you can possibly. And we're on a wireless And the interesting and thing here is there's not one picture of the animal, right? It's, it's all cars. So it knows. It related yeah. the context back to what we want. Now, does this only work for searching stuff out on the Internet? What if I want to find something on my PC? In particular, what if I want to find people are always like, I don't, because the Start Menu Classic is gone, I want to find the Control Panel. I can't see the icon for the Control Panel. Can I search for that? You know, if it can find a door on the Internet, I'm pretty sure it can I'm find I'm pretty sure it can, too. C-O-N-T-R. Oh, now, look at this. This is fascinating. Yeah. I hit control panel, I started to type it, and I just have C-O-N-T-R. Uh -huh. Here's the interesting thing. I see control panel. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah. That control panel is also available in the PC settings. So even though the word PC settings has nothing in it that relates to control panel, Windows 8.1 is smart enough to realize they're it's, related. It's making a guesstimate on what you're actually looking for. That is so yeah. cool. So if I go into PC settings, I'm going to see the control panel. And if I go into control panel, I'm going to see it. And then I have these other control panels for my printer or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So how cool is that? I'm going to go in, and sure enough, there it is. I talked about in the previous section about usability options. And sure. um, if you have uh, uh, disabilities or you're hard of hearing or whatever, uh, so, all of that is in here. You can see the ease of access. Um, all these features are in here, and I can do, use that search feature to do the exact same thing. Yep. Search for disability. Search for... Um, and find the specific aspect of it that you're looking find for. This, and it'll take me right into it. Mm -hmm. I just don't have to spend all this time hunting and pecking around my operating system. So uh, really, that, that search, I mean, if you're a fairly good type, type, typist and you're kind of put off by the start screen, that capability to get to whatever app you want is this pretty much takes care of it right yep. there. What if I do something like, let me show you this. Um, if I do the, uh, okay, well, there's a good one. So I started to type, and I'm going to go back one. Whoops, as I make it go away. So I just saw the Dallas Cowboys come up. Uh, let me go back one. Oh. <laughs> you're talking about if you're a good typist. I was not well, a good typist. Well, you know, I was going to let you work through it. So here's, a, here's an example. So I started to type. It's figuring out because I live in Dallas and I look at the Dallas Cowboys every once in a while. Uh, chances are I, I want to see the Dallas Cowboys. And, and, and you're okay admitting that, which, yeah, I, which I admire, I admire you for. But here's the cool thing. Okay. You see this little line right here, this little visual uh, clue? Uh -huh. Everything above it is something related to something that's already on my PC. Everything below it tells me it's an external search that it found out on the Internet. Sure. So I don't have to spend time. Nothing's worse than thinking you're looking at the local file and realizing you're way out somewhere else or vice versa. You, sure. you somewhere else. And, and the, kind of the, the icon thing file. helps differentiate that as well, right? Icon helps differentiate. So very, yep. very powerful tool. I don't care what it is you're looking for, whatever. Just start typing mm -hmm. from this interface, and you'll find everything that was there before. I mentioned... You don't need training. You don't have to go buy a book on, on mm -hmm. the new user interface. Just start typing, and it's all right there. Absolutely. Cool. So that, that really searches. You can see why that's one of my favorite features. But let's talk about some of the PC settings. Now, you kind of dived into this a little bit ago. I, I did. In a previous section, I talked about PC settings. And just as a reminder, brought in the Charms bar, hit Settings, and then went down to Change PC Settings here on the bottom. Now, this is broken out. If I were to jump out into sections, it was a little more linear in Windows 8. It's grouped it a bit in uh, Windows 8.1. I just wanted to show really quick, here's a breakdown. Uh, if you jump into PC and devices, you see there's, there's a, a, a subset list, which includes you know, Bluetooth and devices and, and mouse and touchpad. And all see that power stuff. and sleep, which allows me, if I click on that, it allows me to set how my computer turns itself off, whether I want it sleep mode or I want a full shutdown, how many times. Absolutely. It allows me to set the power when it's on battery to act one way or another. Very fast, very easy to get to. Yeah. Or your accounts. We showed that earlier with picture password and, and being able to set how you access. Now, one we didn't talk about was SkyDrive. A SkyDrive is actually a really significant part of Windows 8 and 8.1. SkyDrive is essentially cloud storage. Now, this is Microsoft's offering that gives you 7 free gigabytes of storage in the cloud. You can actually augment that with additional 25, 50, or 100 gig. Meaning, though, let me clarify, meaning that if I have Windows 8.1 installed, I have 7 gig of free backup storage. In the cloud. So... If you, if you have pictures of the kiddos or whatever Documents else. Documents you, you don't want to lose, yeah. whatever. And SkyDrive, by default, will turn itself on and give you access to those without you doing anything. It's all there. And from any device. 
And as always, if you don't want that, you can, you can change to a, a different service or you can point yeah. it to a different location. But most people love it because as soon as you boot it up, boom, there it is. It's ready to go. Well, and SkyDrive has applications on uh, the Mac OS. It has it on iOS. It has it on Android. On the Windows Phone, it's you can access SkyDrive from pretty much any platform. I, there's some resistance mm -hmm. out there, I think, for and it's starting to go away now. But yeah. originally, some people were really worried about going to the cloud. I tell you, we travel the country. We talk to lots of people. Mm -hmm. I was just can't remember where I was. I think I was in Florida, but there was a, a lady there. She was an IT professional, but she talked about she she got a virus on her machine. Yeah. And, and you think IT professionals, they wouldn't get viruses on their machine, but it does happen. Yes, it does. The point was she lost everything, including mm -hmm. all her files, all her family photos, everything that she had carried with her. So this her. was her personal machine. Oh, yeah. 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 It was a laptop that she actually brought to the event itself. It only takes one time for that to happen when you realize, A, it's nothing, right? Seven gig is a whole lot of space. You could have already had it stored and backed up on there instantly so no problem you just pop a new machine in or you reformat the machine and all your documents are there or if you want to expand it out if you have a really extensive photo library a really extensive documentation I have uh, I have documents from 12 years ago that I still yeah. keep is it super costly to add on well let's see I, I mentioned you could add 25 50 or 100 gig and I believe the cost difference is 15 25 or 50 bucks a year a year not a, year. a month a year yeah so if you want to go blow it out and get the largest amount you can, it's still only going to be uh, uh, 50 bucks a year. 50 bucks a year, and you're you're covered. You never have to worry about losing all those photographs or documents or whatever. I, I recommend it to yeah. everybody. Again, if you want to use someone else's services, fine, but just make sure you do it because you yes. don't want to get that point where it's it's a, a disaster. And we talked about you know uh, some of the security features, and mm -hmm. probably a good time to bring that up too. Windows 8.1 did a lot to fix. Uh, under the covers, uh, some of the security aspects to lock it and secure the operating system. You know, I almost don't want to use the word fix because no, that's a bad when one. you when you think enhance. in terms of enhance, yeah, because when you think in terms of Windows XP, which is which is going end of support in April of this year, so 2014, coming April real fast. 8th, yeah, uh, end of support goes away. That means there will not be any more security updates to Windows XP. Windows XP came out a long time ago. It came out in October of 2001. Okay, yep. when it was designed, there it could not possibly have been prepared for the security threats that we face every day. And the internet, the yeah. open access, the ports, everything. Did they even have internet in 2001? I don't, well, yeah. Someone did, but someone not did. Me. Okay, yeah. so so basically, it was a long time ago. So as we've we've kind of progressed, the operating systems have progressed. Windows 7, when it came out, was very secure. Windows 8 is actually significantly more secure than Windows 7 is. And there's so much that we're just not going to have a chance to talk under the covers. Even if you get past the new UI interface, mm -hmm. even if you get past all the other stuff, there's so much underneath. And a couple things I want to call out real quick. Um, one is in Windows 8.1, you have the ability to um, check every time the computer boots, right? It checks yes. against a record to make sure that none of the boot files have been altered by any kind of malware or any kind of... That was actually a significant change because uh, in, in the interim between the launch of Windows 7 and the launch of Windows 8, it was discovered that the vast majority of the new really nasty viruses coming out were attacking that, that point between when you hit the power button to when the operating system takes over. Yeah. And uh, that secure boot feature makes sure that there's a successful handshake so when the operating system takes over, that machine is clean. Windows 8.1 also does the same thing for your drivers, your mouse drivers, your screen drivers. It checks the record of the driver and checks against what it should be. And if it sees any altercation at all, it pauses it, stops it, it comes up and basically says, can I clean this? And you say yes, and it wipes it, restores it back to where it is, and you won't have any chance. There are it. also two other things that, that really play into security with Windows 8. Number one is BitLocker. Ah. Now, BitLocker was in Windows 7, uh, but it was only available at the enterprise and ultimate levels. In Windows 8, it's available at the professional level, and that lets you encrypt your entire hard drive. So if someone swaps your, swaps your device, um, they, will not, they will not get your information. They'll get your device, but they won't get your information. The other piece about that, uh, along with uh, the BitLocker on the hard drive, is the BitLocker on external hard drives. So you're able to encrypt uh, an external hard drive or a thumb drive or, or whatever else you can do. The other thing, along with um, BitLocker, that I think is pretty important is antivirus. Yep. So for the first time ever, antivirus has been included in the Windows operating system. Yep. 
and, and we'll talk about that. One thing I want to add on BitLocker, BitLocker on the Pro version, and by the way, if you're trying to decide which version, go Pro. Uh, it, it alone, BitLocker is worth it. BitLocker is turned on by default. As soon as you install it, it's already in the process of encrypting. Most people don't realize what that means is without BitLocker, someone could actually break the physical casing, take out your hard disk, and just plug it into their machine, and they have access to all those files. With BitLocker encryption that's turned on by default, as soon as you install Windows 8, 8.1, it encrypts that drive, and it doesn't matter. They're not going to be able to get access to that data, which is very, very cool. And then you were bringing up... Yeah, actually, oh, antivirus, antivirus. antivirus, yeah, for the first time ever, Windows includes antivirus. Yep. It's an app in the control panel that you can click on and set, and basically for the life of the machine, you get free updates and free scans and free checks and there's everything a, there's else. There's another great feature, too. Uh, Microsoft in Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer used to load malware mm -hmm. and, and some antivirus stuff when it, when it booted in previous versions, but the virus and malware people figured out that they could actually re-encode it to get loaded before mm -hmm. when Internet Explorer started. The very first thing is it would load up the antivirus or uh, mm -hmm. the malware and then it would load the antivirus. Well in the new version in 8.1 that's all reversed. Mm -hmm. Windows Internet Explorer will not load until it first loads that uh, uh, anti-malware antivirus program mm -hmm. uh, and once that gets loaded then it doesn't matter what's loaded behind it. It'll find it, it'll stop it, it'll scrub it clean. So much better security, so much better options available. Absolutely. Okay, so I see I've got uh, network access, I've got, I could check my wireless here, I can do this, and I've got this update and recovery. Yeah, so update and recovery allows you to do a couple of things that I really like. You can actually go in and you can launch a set of, you know, we used to have safe mode, I guess they would yep. call it. Uh, you now boot into this advanced recovery tools and you can do, you can do, if, if your machine is running kind of wonky, you can set it back to a, uh, an early state where everything's working fine, doesn't take away your, your data, your data's still safe there, or you can do a full kind of clean install without actually having the install uh, media. So you right. can just get it back to the original state. So cool. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you so many more options than you had in previous ones. So if you have to uh, uh, recover it, you can also wipe everything off of it too. So I know people recycle machines. Yeah, that's what tools. I was talking about is when you, you, when you do a, a basically a clean refresh, it, it, it does a higher grade of machine wipe to make sure that that data is Your personal data yeah. doesn't go with the hard disk when it goes. So yeah. a whole bunch of options. Boy, there's so much here we could talk about. Yeah. We just keep going. One of the other things that I wanted to bring up, is there anything else before we jump no, into it? we're good. Okay. We're good. I want to make sure I don't, don't mess up. Yeah. Um, we talked, we showed some of these uh, key sequences. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I'm going to rip this off, which is probably a bad idea, uh, but I'll do it anyway. So this is the keyboard, and I want to introduce everybody to this key right here. The Windows key. The Windows key, which in a previous life, no one ever even knew existed or used, but now it's used all the time. It was and a placeholder. It was a placeholder, yeah. but this thing is incredible, because what Microsoft has done is made some of the most common used uh, sequences now tied to the Windows key. And we talked about some of these, right? Uh, you showed, I believe, Windows C. That's how I pop up the charms uh -huh. menu. Uh, you also, I believe, showed us Windows X, mm -hmm. which gives me all of those high-level uh, customization features, my task manager, well, it's, my it's device basically manager. basically digging in under the hood. It's, it's the power tools, right? Yep. Can I show one of my favorites? Sure. Uh, I like Windows R. This is that run command mm -hmm. that you used to have, kind of the old DOS box or the uh, uh, Windows shell commands that you can yeah. run right from a text-based editor. Uh, Windows R is right there. Um, there's so many. Uh, one other one, Windows P. If you're on the road like us, you're doing presentations. Boy, this is a great interface for multi-monitor. I want to project Connecting to one screen, but keep the existing Those screen. Those good old VGA projectors yeah. that are still there the world over. Yes. Yeah. This works so much better than previous iterations. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a ton of these. Is there a cheat sheet out there that we can... Uh... Absolutely. In fact, I blogged about this. Now, I didn't come up with it myself. Uh, I actually borrowed it from somebody else. But if you go to brettandmike.com and check our blog section, I have probably the most copious list of shortcuts you have ever seen. And I will also point out there, if you go to the Microsoft Store built mm -hmm. in, there are apps that are free, there's like four of them now, that have every shortcut, yep. every piece, of, and you just keep that on your computer. If you're ever mm -hmm. confused, you pop it up, and boom, there's all your key sequences yep. as well. So a lot of different options to get you up to speed and, and, and moving rather fast. And then you were talking about in, in when I go change my PC or my PC settings, yep. uh, that they've changed it, they kind of grouped some things around and, and applied that? Uh, on, on what specifically? Uh, I believe when, so let's go back into settings. 
Oh, are you talking about in the PC settings yeah. how they arrange? Yeah, 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 I actually showed that a little bit earlier. Oh, but sorry. See, I wasn't even listening to you. That's okay. It's not the first time. But basically, <laughs> where in Windows 8 it was very linear, now you have it broken down by PC and devices and accounts. Groups. And I'm sorry. Like that, 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 yeah. You're exactly right. Now, okay. I'm, I'm saying about that. Um, so, so a lot of different options. It might be a good time to, to kind of summarize this sure. whole thing of what we've learned through these different five segments. First and foremost is the operating system had to change. And yeah. you mentioned it, people don't like change. Yes, right? they don't. There was a ton of resistance. And I've had people come to my events, mm -hmm. to my seminars, and I ask them before it starts, how many of you are excited about Windows 8.0? How many of you are, you know, and, and very few hands. They're all scared. They're timid. They're, they've got bad kind of, so I'm like, okay, fine, tell me. What, what is it you don't like? And it usually goes something like this. I heard from my brother's yeah. plumber's wife that she had a bad experience. Most people have spent less than five minutes with it that don't like it. Exactly. Noise. And what we found and what we believe, and we're not getting paid, brettandmike.com, we're mm -hmm. not getting paid really for anything. Yeah. Um, it seems to be a huge drain on our bank account, actually. <laughs> That's a whole other story. Uh, but we want to get the information out. Microsoft's yeah. not telling us what to say or anything else. This is our deal. Mm -hmm. uh, we really do believe in this operating system. And yeah, part do. of the reason I wanted to do it is because there's so many people that are missing out on incredible power and performance because they've listened to someone's brother's cousin's plumber. Truth is, it is a faster, better operating system oh, my than the goodness. previous version. Uh, faster. Let me just bring that up because yeah. I was counting the other day. Now, I've been running my machine for six months, eight months, mm -hmm. which even with, with Windows 7, which I love Windows 7, it would start slowing down and whatnot. Right now, still, after months and months of heavy, hardcore using, I can boot in four or five seconds flat. Sure. It's amazingly quick. Uh, much more powerful, much more robust, so much under the engine. Anyway, we just want to make sure that you don't uh, get psyched out and not even try it. Your goal yeah. is to go out there. So Microsoft had to figure out, they see this trend, and everyone yeah. agrees the trend's happening. The world's going to touch. It is. Right? There's nothing we can do about it. It's going to happen. They've had touch forever with mm -hmm. these operating systems. No one ever used it. Correct. Part of the reason why, because they didn't really design the operating system from the ground up to use touch. So hence, now we have Windows 8, and even better, Windows 8.1, yeah. which is, uh, adds and extends all of uh, the features and functions that we showed you. It makes it that much more easier, uh, great improvements, things that, that they put in based on user feedback, et cetera. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, then we talked about how do you customize it? How do you set it up? How do you do the start menu? Don't mm -hmm. be afraid of the start menu, that new user interface, because yeah. it's the exact same as the previous start menu. It is. Microsoft just pushed the button for you. It pushed right? it, yeah. Same things you had there. You've got the incredible search. Yeah. Keep going. I'm just throwing stuff out. No, no, no. The, okay. the, basically, it's, it's, it's not that different, right? It's, it's, a, it's an enlarged start screen. Uh, start button is all it is. Once you get past that, it's still Windows. There's some added features in there that benefit from a touch screen, but you don't have to have a touch screen if you want to use Windows 8. It's still perfectly functional. And the last iteration I'll bring up, Brett brought this up, mm -hmm. Windows XP support going away, right? There's so many customers out there that are going to have to look at a new operating system. And if you're going to look at a new operating system, you're probably going to be updating your hardware yes. as well. If you're going to be updating your hardware, why wouldn't you look at something with the touch features? Why wouldn't you look at something that's built for Windows 8.1 or 8.0? Well, if you're going to get a new device with a touch screen, get a touch operating system, right? There you go. And I'll put in a plug. We've done a podcast now on what should you look for. If you're going out there to get a new tablet or you're going out to, to look at devices, we actually got some kind of insider information on here's the things you need to be thinking about because uh, there's so many options. You don't want to put an investment in and find out you, you chose poorly. So check out our podcast. It's out there as well on brettandmike.com. Uh, and, and make sure you tune into that. What else do we need to do to summarize? That's pretty much it. Just you know where to go to get more information. And I think, uh, I think we've probably captured as much as we possibly can in conveying Windows 8. Obviously, they're huge fans of brettandmike.com. That's how they found us. But if they wanted to go outside of brettandmike.com, what are some good uh, websites or addresses they can go to to get even more information? You know, probably a starting point if you want, uh, particularly if you're a little more familiar with Windows and you want to share it with others, or you want to get a little more uh, tutorial on, on getting involved with the operating system, honestly, windows.com is really pretty good. There's a fair amount of videos that, that can help you with it. Uh, additionally, if you want to get more information on the product, microsoft.com slash windows is a good spot as well. And always come back to brettandmike.com where we have even more videos. We're putting up videos on a regular basis. We're doing podcasts. Mm -hmm. We're doing pretty regular blogging every week or so. We're putting up a couple of new blogs uh, on that. 
Uh, yep. We're answering technical questions from audience members when we go do presentations and they ask uh, questions. We're posting those up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of good information. Everyone who's been looking at this lately has given us good feedback telling us it's, it's a huge, valuable resource. If you'd like to contact us, how do they contact us? Well, you can contact us both at Brett and Mike at brettandmike.com or you can contact me at brett at, at brettandmike.com <laughs> or mike at, at brettandmike.com. Brett and right. Or as Brett says, send all the kudos to him and all the complaints to me. As it should basically. be. That's not how it should be. But anyway, we want to hear from you if you have suggestions or ideas of what we could do better or topics we could cover or, or just want to touch base and see how things are going. We'd love to hear from you. We Absolutely. read our own email and we'll be glad to respond. Uh, we do travel too, so give us a couple of days to respond, to be fair. Uh, but other than that, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. Our action item for you is at least you should be intrigued enough to go try it. Spend more than five minutes. And like we found with customers that we've met, the, the response you typically get is you can take back Windows 8, 8.1 when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Really, it's that much loyalty out there for people who have actually spent the time and invested. Once you get to know it, absolutely. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon again on brettandmike.com. Bye, everybody.